Welcome to Five Social Media Strategies for Social Media. Today's panelist is Martha Lonigan. Uh, Martha joined the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville Walton College ASB TDC in 2012. She has a bachelor's degree from the University of Arkansas and earned her Juris Doctor from the University of Arkansas School of Law. Lonigan and her husband have owned automotive businesses for the past 10 years. She practiced law in Arkansas and Oklahoma for more than 12 years, primarily representing banks, corporations, and small businesses in the areas of collections, foreclosure, and bankruptcy. Martha organizes volunteer professional presenters for the eight county region of Northwest Arkansas to present affordable business seminars. She works one-on-one -on -one with small business owners to develop social media and general marketing plans. Take it away, Martha. Thank you, Timothy, and good morning. Um, it's my understanding about half of you listening in today are from Arkansas, and then we have uh, several listeners from California, Colorado, Florida, and Texas, so welcome. I am coming to you from the beautiful campus in Fayetteville, Arkansas, the University of Arkansas. I am in the Walton uh, College, and our center here is one of seven in the state of Arkansas and I like to mention this because there are over 900 centers like ours called small business development centers or small business and technology development centers across the United States and in US territories so when I talk about our seminars I talk about our services please know that you can reach out there is absolutely going to be a center somewhere within at least two to three hours from you that offer many like services like ours um, those of you who are in Arkansas, this exact seminar is normally three hours, so I'll be going through the slides a little more quickly. Obviously, we won't have question and answer live, so that takes a lot of the time out. But we will be presenting this seminar live at the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce here in Fayetteville, Arkansas on May 19th from 9 a.m. to noon. So if any of you are local and are kind of inspired by this, and the most important thing about the live seminars is you get to network and work with other small business owners. Those of you not familiar with Arkansas, uh, please know that uh, Arkansas is not just a small rural state anymore uh, due to the fact that the world's largest retailer, seller of goods and employers of humans is just up the road from us. We have a burgeoning small business community here in Northwest Arkansas, and I get to work on a daily basis. Uh, last week I worked with a new law office a new pizza place opening on our 30-mile bike trail, and a new uh, upscale boutique uh, women's clothing um, owner. So we have a, a great experience to share uh, with the Northwest Arkansas uh, small business community. Social media is important. You have to have a presence. I tell people not having a website is like not having a telephone for your business in 1975. You must, must have a website. Um, it does not have to be the world's fanciest website, but you must have a website. And then social media is how small business owners make and continue connections to their customers and get people to their website and get people into their brick and mortar store if they have one. So on the left on your screen, you see the traditional marketing, also called outbound marketing that we're all probably very familiar with. The telemarketing, trade shows where you're reaching out to people, offering them things obviously direct mail um, with the recent changes in the US Postal Service the fact that you can pick neighborhoods within a uh, zip code has made direct mail I know here in Northwest Arkansas a very viable option again it is has seen a great resurgence email blasts if you have subscriptions uh, to services like constant contact you can tailor subscribe emails and send them out to your customers and clients obviously we all know print ads and TV and radio ads but those are often very, very expensive, and a lot of our small business owners operate on very minimal budgets. So those are considered interruptions. You're sending something to people or greeting people in a way that they may have not asked for it. On the right-hand side is where we have social media, and that's inbound marketing. People are choosing to come and like your Facebook page. They're choosing to follow you on Twitter. Uh, the first line, SEO, that's your search engine optimization. Social media helps people find out about you and get to your website. Blogging is huge. We are having a seminar here at our center in June with a blogger. Blogging is the modern uh, newspaper columnist uh, of this, uh, this generation, and it gets people to follow you and stay in touch with you. 
then all the social media outlets. RSS is the little orange squiggly icon you see a lot used by uh, news outlets to get really simple syndicated uh, information and articles out. Then people coming up to you and taking your free tools and trials is a way of inbound marketing and public relations, which is very closely tied to social media. It helps people get to know, like, and trust you, and then they seek you out because they like what you're doing. And all of these are giving you permission to be a part of their life, to be in their news feed. Content is simply, you'll hear marketers use this word, it's a very simple term. All it means is the stuff you put out there on social media. So if you share an article, if you post a picture of your employees, anything you post is called content. That's all that word means. And I have a lot of beginning folks ask me, what, is that, what does that mean when you keep saying content? It's whatever you post. So when you post content, that's the fire. You're starting the fire. You're showing people something that's going on. You're showing them a product or service you have. And then the social media is the gasoline, which helps to spread the word. Sometimes we have seen here in Northwest Arkansas at an incredibly fast rate. Um, now, some of you who may be closer to my age may like this uh, slide. Uh, one day, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook will join together and be called UTwitface. So sometimes we have love-hate relationships with social media. And with my beginning um, businesses in social media, I have to really make sure they understand there is a profound difference between your personal Facebook page, what you see your friends doing, and your business Facebook. Your business social media. Those are very different relationships, different kinds of posts, um, but we all do have to keep a good attitude about it. Um, please know this is interesting to remember that you know YouTube is owned by Google, and Google is the monster that runs the engine for everything. So you'll hear me talk a lot about it in here, the importance of having a YouTube channel, how easy it gives you uh, video links to share and all your other social media. So with Google and YouTube combined and Facebook now owning Instagram, those are the monsters that move the engine. Here are some recent statistics I was able to find. You will hear people say Facebook is dead with the younger generation. There have been recent research articles that show this is not true. Facebook is not going anywhere. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg was just here in Benton County last summer at a Walmart uh, Saturday meeting. Uh, Walmart and Facebook and all of the social media outlet uh, engines are combining together. Um, it's not going anywhere. And it is the most popular social media outlet that our small businesses use. Instagram is down low in this list. I don't know about where you're located, but in Northwest Arkansas, it has become monstrous, especially with women and teenage girls. Anything you have that is visually attractive, now, if you're an accountant, I don't advise my accountants to get an Instagram account. There's not a lot of visual attractiveness there. But if you have any kind of product or service or something that you do, um, you know, if you're in sports and fits, tr fitness training or outdoors, um, Instagram is very important. Please remember you're going to get a copy of this. This is my full seminar, so I like to give you as much meat as I can, but I will be going through the slides pretty quickly now. These are the sites most used by marketers, and you can see Facebook is at the top. Uh, Twitter, especially if you have clients um, under 30 or uh, uh, a business that is very uh, generated by sports, sports activities, very, very important. LinkedIn, absolutely every business should have a LinkedIn page for the business and the prime owners or the prime persons. For example, if you have a, a, a great chef at your restaurant but the chef is not an owner, those people should have personal LinkedIn pages. Those are uh, two that I advise almost every single business to have. Social media is designed to be disseminated through social interaction using highly accessible and scalable publishing techniques. So access is king. I advise everyone your Facebook page should be wide open on the security. You should not be approving posts before they go up. You should not be limiting people. If you have problems, we can come back and address that. My experience in the years I have been doing this is the only people that have problems with negative comments, hateful people, multiple postings, are people who post about politics or use inappropriate words. And my attitude is if you're going out there posting about politics and you're not in the political business, you're asking for trouble. As long as you are real and part of your community and posting content that has to do with your business and 
who you are as a business, you're not going to have issues. Social media is social, and so it needs to be open. It's about relationships. People want to know that you're reliable. You need to listen. You need to watch. What do people like? What posts of yours are they most interested in? And it has to be engaging. It's a conversation back and forth. If you make a post or you put something out there and people comment on it, at minimum you need to go back and like it or make a comment back. It's the equivalent to someone walking in your store and saying, good morning, I like the dress in the window, and you turn around and walk off to the back of the store. So if you're going to do social media, you have to be part of the conversation, not just throwing things out at the people who are following you. It takes a time to build that relationship, to build that following, and it's a steady stream of information. That doesn't mean four times a day. I have a lot of businesses that I advise to only post three to four times a week. And so a lot of what I tell you, it, it's hard to target it directly to you. That's why I go out from the center and meet with small businesses on site or in their home offices, and we develop a 12-month marketing plan for them. And I have people that I advise them to do all different levels of posts. It's very specific to your type of business. It's not easy or fast, but it can become enjoyable and it can be something that doesn't take a lot of your time once you get used to it. It is absolutely not free advertising. It is taking time from your work as a small business owner. Therefore, it's not free because your time is not free. You have to participate. You can have other people help you with it, but you need to be watching what they're doing. You need to know what posts, what tweets are going out about your business every single day. First of all, it's a way to re-energize re your business. I have a client who's re-energizing his restaurant. He's recently joined the chamber. He's put up new signs. He's redecorated the inside. So we're doing a massive marketing effort to tell not only his current customers, but potential new customers about what's going on at his restaurant. It's about listening to people, showing them your expertise. It's generating interest. It's not just selling. It is a place to push sales and to show new products, but it's all about the relationship. Number two, you need to know your customer base. If you don't know who your target market is, then how do you decide what kind of content they might be interested in? And I'm going to show you in a minute on our Center's Facebook page how you can see who your followers are and know their gender, know the area they live in and their age. Living, breathing humans with money are not target consumers unless you have about a fifty million dollar marketing budget. You have to, through research, which you can get research here at our center, we provide market research on potential consumers and customers, or through your own history, know about them, their gender, where they live, their age. That will help you choose your social media outlets. And so the sites, when people come to your Facebook page, when they follow you on Twitter, when they follow you on Instagram, you get all this information, where they're located, their age, their gender, their education, their workplace, and their relationship status. It's helpful if you have a salon where you offer couples massage therapy to know how many of your followers are coupled, are in a relationship, or consider themselves to have a partner. Things like that are very helpful in your marketing. You need to know what they're looking for. Are they looking for knowledge from you, a product? Why should they quit getting their hair cut at their current hair salon and come to your new hair salon? You need to show them in your social media what's different about you, what's special. Are you less expensive? Are you more convenient and located near their work? They're looking for you to help them solve a problem. Here are some basic facts, and I'm not going to read through these. You can, you can look them up online yourself. I just like to mention them so you can see the massive impact. Um, 1.2 billion people have Facebook accounts and get on there once a month. More than 25 million small businesses have Facebook pages, so obviously it's a viable outlet. Twitter has 100 million daily users, a billion registered. YouTube, which is one of my top ones that I push with my clients. YouTube is the number two search engine in the world next to Google, and YouTube is owned by Google. LinkedIn, very fast growing. Notice the young age group because they're looking for jobs, and then the age group 45 to 54 because they're either transitioning or wanting to share their knowledge. 
geo, which means geography located. If you have a restaurant, if you have a service brick and mortar store, getting people to go on these social media outlets such as Yelp and put out reviews, um, rewarding people for giving you reviews. Research has shown that 80% of consumers trust online reviews, only 20% trust ads. So once again, free advertising is not the way to go, but having customers place reviews on your Facebook, place reviews on Yelp is very, very helpful to small businesses. Google Plus, a lot of people don't like it. It's not as pretty as Facebook. It's not as popular, but once again, it's owned by Google. So I tell people, whatever you post on your Facebook, at minimum, post it on your Google+. Plus. It will help when people are searching for words used in your post for businesses like yours to find you and then get them to your website. Pinterest, beautiful visual boards, a lot like Instagram, but you can segregate. Um, I've worked with a lot of construction companies using Pinterest now to control their customers' choices, to show them um, different uh, kitchen renovations, bathroom uh, renovations, obviously for jewelry, clothing, children's clothing, things like that. Pinterest is, is very, very uh, interesting and very, very popular. Instagram is probably the biggest, newest darling of the social media uh, world, at least here in Northwest Arkansas. Um, people like it because it's simple. So far, even since Facebook bought it, it doesn't have ads or suggested posts. Uh, I think that's probably going to come in the future, but because it's simple, it's one picture, it uses hashtags, it doesn't have the advertising, it's very, very popular. 23% of all teens in the U.S. consider it their favorite social media outlet. So if that's a target consumer for you, you want to be on Instagram. Social media, we've already talked a little bit about, obviously, your products, your promotions, um, but a big thing to remember is it's great for customer service. I tell people all the time, if you all have had to go out of your way or someone in your staff has gone out of their way to help a customer, take a picture of that. Put it on your Facebook page. Show people how your customer service is a reason they should switch from where they're currently going to your business. These are just other suggestions and ideas for how you can use social media to keep people engaged. If you don't save, read, or review anything today that I tell you, this slide is the most important. Social media must, first and foremost, entertain. That's the number one reason people come to social media. They want to be entertained. And the way you do that is you can find cartoons. I helped an accountant find cartoons about accounting to post on her Facebook page. You can always find some fun little cartoons. People love quotes. You can go to Pinterest. You can just search in Google for quotes to post. Educate. Show people that you're going to training. Go out and follow. If I worked with an attorney setting up a practice last week. He follows now the American Bar Association Facebook page. So he doesn't have to create all these educational posts. He can just share them from the American Bar Association. General information shows people he's keeping up with trends. It's good, solid, reputable information. You don't have to create the educational post, but you need to help give something back to the community. And that leads us to E, embrace. Show people how you're involved in the community. If you coach Boys and Girls Club basketball on Saturdays, it shows people that you love your community, you're a good, trustworthy person, or the Boys and Girls Club wouldn't let you come every Saturday, and it lets people see that when they give money to your business and pay you, that you're giving back to your community. Last is e-commerce. Do posts about what you've got to sell. Do posts about special services you offer. Do posts about uh, how much you know you're having a special this month if people do this or people do that or if they come in the store on this day. So if you rotate this, entertain, educate, embrace e-commerce. Entertain, educate, embrace e-commerce. You're not going to overload people with just sell, sell, sell because if you do that, they will unfollow you. You may think they're your person that's following you on your Facebook, but I bet they've got you hidden because the number one reason people quit following a business on social media is because it's boring or they sell stuff too much. Establish your social media presence. So this is a great resource here, moz.com slash local. It can help you get listings on all the major search engines, get them all covered in one uh, place. There are some charges for that, but I always like to mention this um, for people who don't have a lot of time or want to make sure that they get um, a post out and it's in a lot of places at once. So I like to have that as a resource for you and that'll be in the email you'll get from Timothy. Main thing is look at your target market. 
look at your competitors. What are your competitors doing? Now, don't go out and like your competitor's Facebook page. They're going to see that and they're going to think you're creeping on them. But go out and see what they're doing. This Mexican restaurant that I was mentioning to you I worked with, I did research and I found the best Mexican restaurant Facebook pages I could find, one's in Houston, one's in Albuquerque, and one's in Kansas City. He has gone out and liked those Facebook pages so that in his news feed, he can see what they're doing and get ideas and see how they're promoting things with their customers. So listen to the conversations, see what people who are doing it well are doing. Learn from it. It's called capitalism and the internet is wide open for us to all learn from each other. Blogs are a great way. I talked about that a little bit earlier. Uh, like I said, we have a blogging seminar here at our center at least three times a year. You don't have to be a professional writer to be a blogger. I worked with a home remodeling gentleman and his daughter, and his daughter has given him a tape recorder, and when he's driving to jobs, he will dictate an idea for a blog, how to winterize your home. Why, what are the most popular countertops that I'm putting in kitchens today and why? How are those countertops made? Whether to take out a tree or put in new trees when you're expanding your home into your backyard. Whether to build a deck or a patio. And he dictates all this great 30 years of knowledge he has about home remodel. His daughter types it up and they post, post it in a blog. So anyone can write a blog. It's sharing your expertise, sharing your ideas, sharing your thoughts. Strategy four, once you start with social media, you need to measure it. See what's working and what's not. This can be as simple as, okay, here I posted a video about this topic. A week later, I posted a picture about it. And another week later, I posted an article from this expert series and put a comment on it. Which one had the most engagement? Which one got the most likes? Which one got the most comments? Which one got the most shares? It helps you understand what your followers are interested in and what they want to see in your social media. Here's a little chart that shows you what are our objectives. Are we a new business and we want to create awareness that we're here? Do we want to get more leads by showing our services or having offers of specials? Or do we want to highlight events, show ourselves out in the community, show ourselves at conferences so people know where we are and what we're doing? And ROI simply means return on investment. If we're going to spend this much time, possibly some money on Facebook promoted posts or boosted posts, how are we getting return on this? K K KPIs are just, is a, just a fancy uh, acronym for key performance indicators. Set a goal. It can be a simple goal. We're going to try to get 20 more likes on every picture we post in the month of May. And we're going to do that through research and taking really good and interesting pictures. Here's an example of one uh, from uh, a real estate company. Over on the left, create awareness. We want to get more visits to our website. And then we want to convert those visits to people contacting us. That's a very general good goal. We want to generate leads. We're going to put out, you can see in the green part on the right hand side, we're going to create a home buyer and resource guide. And we're going to have it where people can download that for free or view it for free. And so let's set a goal. We're taking the time to create this. We want 150 people a month to download our home buyer goal. So that's a great goal. Here's what market analysis is free from this and can help you. Say you have a real estate company in Fayetteville and you've put out this free download new home buyer info guide and you notice that 70% of the people who downloaded that last month lived in Rogers, Arkansas, 30 miles away. That shows you something's going on in Rogers, Arkansas and maybe we should concentrate some marketing, maybe some print ads, some direct mail ads to that area because people for some reason in that town are really interested in buying new homes. Maybe it's a younger demographic. Maybe more people are getting jobs there. So that's an example of looking at that marketing effort and getting some return value from it. The right hand side, always be putting out information about how you're in the community so you're in people's minds. I worked with a company that does a disaster cleanup. People don't do disaster cleanup that often. It rarely happens in people's lives. But if they're seeing your posts about community events you're involved in, how you work with the local fire department, how you have a tailgate at the local college football game and invite people to come, 
if they've got your name in their mind, then when it's 3 a.m. and lightning strikes their house and it's flooding, they're going to remember your name and call you because they've seen these fun and interesting posts that their friends have shared on their Facebook. So there are lots of tools out there to measure this. Uh, Google Analytics is a great one you can sign up for free. If someone prepared your website, they should be sending you Google Analytics reports to show you the people coming. I'm going to show you in a second how you can look on your Facebook page and see who's coming to your Facebook page, who's liking it, who's sharing it. Twitter has analytics. Pinterest has analytics. And all analytics means is who's coming to your site, what are they looking at, what do they like the most, what do they like the least. Um, Instagram right now does not offer free analytics, but there's a free app you can download to get that same information. So this is free market research from social media. Tweetbeep, you can sign up for that. Google Alerts, you just type in with your Twitter, Tweetbeeps, you know, search, it'll pop up. Same with Google Alerts. And you type in the name of your business or name of products that you sell or your town, anything like that, and it will send you alerts and let you know whenever someone out on the web is mentioning your business, mentioning the products you sell, or the events you're involved with. Once again, these metrics and analytics also show who the key influencers are. I am thrilled whenever a local chamber of commerce shares one of my events or shares one of my posts because their followers are my direct consumers, small business owners. So I like to see that and see what they like to share of mine, so I post more of that. It's, this used to be called EdgeRank. It is the mathematical algorithm of Facebook. Know that if you have 500 followers on your Facebook page, and half of them have unfollowed you because all you do is post pictures of the new shirts you have for sale, Facebook knows that. And whenever you make a post, it doesn't go to those 500 people. Facebook will send your post to people who have liked, commented, or shared it in recent months. And if no one is interacting, if your posts are not interesting, if your posts aren't engaging, if people aren't commenting, Facebook quits sending your posts to them. So that's why just throwing up a post every day is not enough. It has to be interesting and entertaining so that people want to interact with it. This is a quote that I give, and it's a story I tell in every social media seminar I do. My grandfather was a small business owner in a little town, Salem Springs, Arkansas, about 30 miles from here. He was a car dealer. Every morning my grandmother made him breakfast and a pot of coffee. And every morning on the way to the car dealership, he stopped at the coffee shop. And he didn't go in there with brochures of new Dodge trucks. He didn't go in there and pass out his card. He went in there to talk to the town people, to hang out with his friends, let them know what kind of person he was, listen to them, converse with them. We don't have a lot of coffee shops like that now. We have coffee shops that are chains. The same people aren't there all the time. And social media can be that coffee shop. It's a place for you to interact with people in your community so they can see what you're doing, that you're someone they can know, like, and trust, and they keep your name in their head. People don't buy a pair of cowboy boots every day. They maybe buy a pair every two years. So social media is how you stay connected to them when next fall they decide, you know what, I think I want a new pair of cowboy boots to wear to the Razorback football games this fall. And they remember you, and they've seen that you're a good, interesting person, that you're a fun business, that you give back to the community, that you've got some good products and good prices. They see that, and they remember you, and they come back for that next pair of cowboy boots in your store because you stayed connected with them. So I want to show you this really quickly to make sure I always, uh, I don't like to assume that everyone is a Facebook Pro, uh, some of you listening may have not even started a Facebook business page. So I want you to see some examples. This is our page from our center here at the university. And you can see we have about 564 followers. And here you can see, uh, this is an example, a post I did, a big bike race, the Joe Martin stage race is coming here. We have lots of small businesses on this route. And one of our center clients, the Handlebar, which is a bike shop that we helped open um, in the last three months here in Fayetteville, shared this information. I shared it, and I put hashtags for Northwest Arkansas people to see it. And I added a little comment. A lot of people don't know what a crit is. He was using biking terms. And so I put a little comment in, get ready, Northwest Arkansas. All these tourists are coming. 
CRIT is short for the French word criterium, which simply means competition. So it's just sharing information with people. Here, when you click Home, this takes you to the news feed of other pages you have liked. And this is what I mean by you can do posts to educate and share that you don't have to create. I have obviously gone out and liked the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce Facebook page. I do events with them. We co-sponsor things together. We are partners in building business. So this is something uh, that I will probably share later today. I'll hit share here and I'll put congrats to Burrito Loco, a local neighborhood restaurant. So glad that you joined the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce. And so that's me giving back to the chamber, spreading their social media. If you're a business and you have vendors, you have customers and clients that have Facebook pages, you should go like them. You should join chambers and network associations. Share their information. You can go down here a little further um, and let's see if one put here's one. I've gone out and liked Entrepreneur Magazine's Facebook page because they post articles all the time about small business. So if it's a busy day or I don't have anything really interesting going on at the center, I can share the Entrepreneur uh, article of the day and maybe make a comment about it, something that I think is of interest to uh, people that, that, that follow our page. So that's a way for you to do that. You can just go up here and type in, for example, Fayetteville Chamber. And sometimes notice this, how it doesn't show up instantly because maybe their address isn't exactly Fayetteville Chamber. It may be Fayetteville Dash. And then you click on it and you go to their page and you can see I've already liked theirs. And notice the address. It's Fayetteville Chamber. If you can't find a Facebook page that you know is out there by searching in Facebook, then switch over, go to Google, type in the name of the place you're looking for, go to their regular website, and then you can click on their Facebook link there. It's already going to open as you, and you can like it that way. So sometimes the Facebook address is kind of different, especially if it's already been taken um, by someone else. So be aware of that. Follow Facebook pages of businesses that are interesting and like yours. The next thing I want to show you, we're going to talk about in a second, is how to get that free market research. Right here on our page, I can go up here to this people symbol, and it shows me every single person that likes my page. And when I click on those people, I have instant free market research. How old are they? Where do they live? Are they married? Do they have children? I can get all that free market research. I can also go here um, in the section uh, here on our page. Hang on just a second. Up here at the top, I'm sorry, it's not refreshing for some reason, and hit Insights. And I can go here to Likes, and it gives me a chart to show me all the likes I've had recently. I can hit on People and look there. 59% of my fans are female. 39% of my fans are men. Here's my biggest age range, 35 to 44. So maybe posts that are appealing to teenagers, since I have zero followers that are 13 to 17, not so much. I want to have posts that are of interest to people in this age range. So once you get 50 likes on your Facebook page, you will get um, this free market research information, which is just invaluable. And it can get even more um, uh, detailed such as here with the overview, it'll show you your posts, it'll show you how many people were reached, so like this one, even though I have 500 followers, apparently only 69 people actually saw it. And so I can begin to see which ones people find very interesting. The biggest reach I have ever had on a post was not a picture of a seminar, it was not an article about small business, it was a quote I posted one day by the actor and banjo player Steve Martin. And the post simply said, be so good they can't ignore you, Steve Martin. And that, for some reason, just stuck a heartbeat with so many business owners. It was repeatedly shared. It was liked. People commented on it. It's about value and being a real person and having something good for the community. So that little quote got the name of my center out in front of thousands of people because people constantly shared it, and it said, shared from University of Arkansas Walton College Small Business and Technology Development Center, and it was just a quote. So that's an example of engaging and entertaining uh, people. And we've looked at those metrics. I showed you go in there, play around with your Facebook analytics, 
look at how your posts are doing, see who your followers are. It's free market research. Now, once people come to your Facebook page, you want to eventually get them to your website. You want to eventually get them in your store, but in your social media, on your website, you can ask them to fill out a contact form, sign up for a mailing list because they'll get discounts and find out about sales, or have one of those little live chat widgets show up. This gets them to engage with your page. E-commerce, you want to get people to put a product in the cart. You want to have options for them to review the cart and review their payment information. And I put this in here because it's so important that anything people are buying or downloading or even just sending you an email, you need to instantly respond with a thank you. Thank you for purchasing. Thank you for sending us a question. We'll be back with you in a minute. Engage, engage, engage. Pinterest offers analytics, like I said before. It'll tell you how many pins are repinned, impressions, most recent pins, etc. Twitter offers analytics, just like what I showed you with Facebook. It tells you who unfollowed, it tells you how many people unfollowed your page, how many people mentioned it, retweeted your tweets. So pay attention to that. Which of your tweets are getting retweeted? Lastly, we're going to talk about managing your time. And I showed you some tricks. One thing is going out and liking Facebook pages, following Twitter accounts that have to do with your community and your customers. I tell every small business in Fayetteville, you need to go out and like and follow every single Razorback Athletics page that there is. Because the majority, if your clients are in Northwest Arkansas, they're going to be Razorbacks. We only have one major D1 college in Arkansas, and that's the University of Arkansas. So even if People aren't sports fans. If they're locals, they need to know what the new football schedule is because that takes up all the hotels in Fayetteville six weekends a year. That's a huge bunch of people that are going to be coming in and eating after the game time or before the game time. So regardless, you need to like all these community pages. If you sell prom dresses, you need to have liked every single major high school cheerleader, football team, high school Facebook page to know what's going on with those target consumers of yours. TweetDeck is another uh, tool to help you manage your social media. Flock powered by Mozilla. These are different um, search and um, tools that can help you to maybe make one post and it goes multiple places. It helps you follow uh, your social media. These are things when you get a little more advanced. If you have multiple social media out, out uh, outreaches, these can help you to manage that. And so this will be in the handout that you're going to get if you want to go to those sites and investigate those. Uh, Seismic, which is owned by Hootsuite. Hootsuite's probably the most popular one that I know small business owners use. Um, I kind of advise people, though, if you've got something, you need to look at your followers. If you have a lot of the same followers on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, you don't want to just be putting one post out and them seeing it three times a day. That gets a little boring and irritating. So even if you use something like this, you need to occasionally go out and put a separate just Twitter offering or just Twitter post, um, something like that to keep it interesting if you have multiple followers. So now I want to show you some uh, local social media sites that I have either worked with, they're either center clients or they're just people I follow locally because they're so good. Every one of these I am showing you are true small businesses. Four to five, maybe one of them has about ten employees. They're small business owners that I know personally manage their own social media. So everything they're doing, I don't care how small your business is, you can do it. The first one I want to show you, this is just one of my favorite small businesses in Northwest Arkansas, one of my favorite families. It's My Brother Salsa. One thing I love about their website is this About Us page. Is this a family business or what? This is Helen. This is her daughter. They've come to a lot of our seminars, and I, I have their permission to tell you that we know them and that they're center clients and we've worked with them. And this is the son-in-law, and they run this business. And my brother Salsa is her brother Salsa recipe. And they have grown this from Helen's Kitchen into a small business that I think now has 11 employees. They have regional contracts with Sam's, with Whole Foods, and sell these wonderful salsa lines. And this is so important for every small business owner to have on their website an About Us page with pictures of the owners, pictures of the staff, 
this is how small business competes with major corporations because major corporations can't do this. They can't put that personal touch out there and create that relationship. Um, one of the reasons I'm on this site is that for social media purposes is I want to show you Helen's blog that she posts. A lot of it is recipes and these are free recipes. Sure, she wants you to use her salsa in the recipe, but you could use anybody else's salsa. And one of my favorite posts of hers that I want to show you is um, uh, last summer they decided to create a new salsa and Helen went on a trip out west to find the perfect new chili pepper for her salsa that she makes in Arkansas. And here is the article. Here's her in her old truck driving out west. Here's her in the fields. So blogs don't have to be, look, this is not a lot of words. It's some fun, interesting, good, clear pictures. And these blogs stay there for good. And you can reshare them. You can write a blog about recipes for Cinco de Mayo and share it again next year. Another one I want to show you, this is a small business that started 20 months ago in Fayetteville, Arkansas. And let me tell you folks, we're in the south and we have lots and lots and lots of flower shops here. Our high school students still wear corsages and boutonnieres to prom. So this is a massive business um, industry here in Northwest Arkansas. This is now the number one florist shop in Fayetteville, Arkansas in less than 20 months. And these owners will tell you themselves it is because of this right here, which is their Instagram account. Now, this is not what Instagram normally looks like. Instagram, in fact, does not want you to ever look at it on a desktop. It's supposed to be all mobile. That's why Facebook bought Instagram for a billion dollars, uh, I think it was three years ago, is because they wanted Instagram's picture editing software. Those of you who use Facebook, you probably noticed about two years ago, you started having these incredible edit your picture options. That's what Facebook posted from Instagram. But I want to show you this because one of the ways Pigment started, these are some old posts when they first started back in uh, 2014. Of course, they posted a picture of their store, but this is what started the buzz about them right here. Is they started doing, you can see I'm hovering over these, these incredible high dollar expensive weddings for some very wealthy families in Northwest Arkansas. This wedding here is in our new Crystal Bridges Museum. It's the first American um, art museum opened in the United States in 24 years. These are weddings that have hundred and two hundred thousand dollar floral budgets. And normal folks, we don't get to see this stuff. This is a bridal dinner. To get this glimpse into this ultimate flower explosion and these incredible weddings. This is how I heard about Pignet, is all my girlfriends talking about, did you see that wedding at Crystal Bridges? Did you see that bridal luncheon out in Goshen that they had the flowers hanging over the table? You see here they do very interesting posts, not just pictures of the brides and well-known weddings, but quotes, do it with passion or not at all. Look how they just, instead of posting one picture of this pig bank, they put all the colors in a row that match, that are visually attractive. More quotes. Be yourself and you can be anything. All about the power. Obviously putting their products out there. Their flowers are beautiful, but they mix it with quotes, pictures of their customers. Um, there's one up here, this one right here, local is the new black. The day they posted that, I bet I saw at least 40 other businesses and people I know personally who are involved in small business repost that quote. People loved it. Who cares it wasn't pictures about pictures of their flowers, it was getting the name and their company pigment out there in front of people. Another one I want to show you is a company here that has become one of the top ten national retailers of young women's uh, clothing it's called Riff Raff. They're located here in Fayetteville and they also have a store in Dallas and Twitter is their number one area that they sell their clothing. Notice the pictures are bright, they're colorful, um, they have little quotes they put with them, stay in the loop, the loop to loop ball bead necklace. Um, they have a lot of these young ladies are local um, young ladies um, involved in the, the Greek system here at the University of Arkansas. So that helps spread the pictures um, into that community. And so just a great one to look up on Twitter. Um, 
you can see they have over 9,000 followers on Twitter, and they've only been in business, I think, for five years in Northwest Arkansas. So their company has just massively exploded due to Internet sales, due to their Twitter and their Instagram accounts. And Timothy's going to send you the links to these. These are just some really great success stories that I'm really comfortable sharing with you because I know you can do this. These are just regular people that I know who have learned social media on their own. They're not pros. They're not experts. Uh, this next one I want to show you is one that is another business that is just located a few blocks away from me. And I just love to follow them because of the uh, great, hang on just a second, I'm sorry, I'm having a little loading issue getting their uh, Facebook page to load. Uh, they are, just a second, sorry. All right, here it is. This is Tara Tot's uh, Natural Parenting. This is their, hang on. There we go. This is their Facebook page. They, like Pigment, take all these pictures with their cell phone. Notice how, yes, they're colorful, but they have them organized. Pictures of the bicycles lined up by colors. Pictures of their customers coming in. And then hopefully the customers will tag themselves um, in the pictures. We have, uh, once again, they do things in line with colors. They share articles about natural parenting, about exercise, about children. They have a huge following that a lot of people really enjoy. Um, with them. They have constant pictures of their store, which is located on the beautiful square um, in Fayetteville, and it just keeps people very, very engaged with them and knowing about them and thinking about them whenever they need to maybe buy a baby gift. So these are some examples um, that I'm very familiar with that I think you can learn a lot from. This one is one of my famous, most favorite ones of Terra Tots that they did a couple years ago. We have a massive bike rally here in Northwest Arkansas, and in fact, the weekend it takes place, it is the largest event in the United States of America. This bike rally is only third to Sturgis in the Daytona February March rally, and I do a seminar on how to market your business at Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue. And I have people say, well, I don't sell hotels or alcohol or food or biker memorabilia, so what does that have to do with me? Terra Tots Natural Parenting and Children's Store has one of their biggest weekends every year doing Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue because they sponsor baby dress your baby like a biker contest and people come in the store and sometimes they've had a little motorcycle and you can take a picture of your child on the motorcycle and this is just building engagement people think it's funny they think it's adorable it's interesting it keeps them involved with the business even though a lot of bikers those 400,000 bikers might not be coming in there and buying Terra Tots baby products it's invigorating it's interesting to their current customers customers to their current client base and I tell people I challenge them tell me any business you have that we can't help market during this massive event that is so overwhelming for Northwest Arkansas when it happens that it's on every street it's in every business I worked with a nail salon last year and they did a special where during bikes blues and barbecue any black nail polish manicures were half off 90% of the people who came in had nothing to do with bikes, blues, and barbecue. They weren't even tourists, but it invigorated their own base. Uh, I worked with a bank, and they are a center client, but they're a co-sponsor, and we talked about how much fun it would be for their social media. They let all the tellers wear appropriate, but biker gear the whole week, week of Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue, and they posted pictures on the bank social media about it, and then their customers and their clients shared the picture, so thousands of people saw the bank being fun, a part of the community, and being part of that awareness of what, what is so important in Northwest Arkansas for those four days every year. 
So here's a list of those websites that I just briefly showed you that I think would be great for you to study, to get ideas from. Um, like I said, they're all great small businesses. I didn't have time to show you Unimaze, but that's a pretty rare name. So if you just type up Unimaze Springdale, Arkansas, that's a kitchen specialty store. And that lady up there does an incredible job branding and with her blogs and her uh, social media. So those are just some fun ones that I would advise you uh, to look at. Here's my information. Um, if any of you live in the eight county region of Northwest Arkansas, you can come to our center for free marketing resources for business consulting. And then you can go to our website and see all the seminars we have coming up. Like I said, this one I just went through very quickly is stretched into a three hour seminar at the Fayetteville Chamber on May 19th, and it's $30 for the public. 20 for chamber members. Um, June 4th at the Fayetteville Public Library will be having a blogging seminar with a professional blogger, Jamie Smith of Jamie's Notebook. And next Wednesday, a week from today, we have a free Instagram for small business marketing webinar with Denise Brooks of Alexis Information Systems. She is a professional marketer and you can sign back up with us for next week and get to know Denise. And then Denise is doing a Pinterest uh, live seminar for us at the Fayetteville Public Library in June. So that's all I have, and thank you very much for tuning in. And Timothy, let me know if we have any questions. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, good job, Martha. I uh, do want to remind everybody that uh, today's uh, webinar was hosted by the University of Arkansas uh, College of Business ASB TDC office, which Martha works at. Uh, and uh, we do have a uh, question that was uh, pending a moment ago. Let me pull that up for Martha to answer here. So uh, Patricia has asked you, uh, what advice do you have for a small business focusing in property management? Property management, okay. Number one there is going to be, uh, well, I, I, I would have two points. One, are you as the property management company wanting to also promote um, the apartments, do you have a lot of vacancies? So that would be one leg. If you're wanting to get more people to come to those apartments and rent them, client testimonials, reviews of people who have lived in your apartment complex, having good pictures of what the apartments look like, people having fun and enjoying the amenities if you're trying to get people in there. If you're trying to attract businesses or property owners to hire you to do their property management, then you would want to have pictures and um, lots of interesting information about the properties that you do currently manage, testimonials from those homeowners or condo owners or apartment complex companies about what a good job you do, um, testimonials from the people who live there about how responsive you are, how much you help. And then I would go out on my Facebook and like national property real estate related uh, Facebook pages so you can share articles about staging your apartment or your house. Sometimes you might be in an area where a lot of people are going to downsize and move into a condo. So sharing an article about how to declutter and downsize your home if you're putting it on the market. Um, articles about how to clean carpet or get smells out of a house or something like that. And then you follow it up with an article about how every apartment or condo that you release showing clips and pictures and videos of how you completely re-clean those apartments and how spotlessly clean and nice your apartments are or your condos when you um, lease them out to people. And lastly, be involved in community groups. Find a home-related community group, a homeless shelter, a day shelter, anything like that that you can give back to. Perhaps you all um, once a year provide one free apartment to someone from the local women's uh, battered women and children's shelter. You should do that not to promote yourself, but because your community deserves it. You're making money off the community, give back. Then obviously if it's, it's a battered woman or a child, you can't show them in the apartment, but you can show the apartment you're giving them. You can show a picture or a sign of the, of the logo of the shelter and put those side by side and say, you know, today we had a mother and two children move into this apartment that we donate one year for free to some victim at this shelter every year. We are so pleased to give back to this community and help this wonderful family. 